in conclusion from finding out my results, I basically have come across kind of four uh, reasons or things that we could maybe do as PE teachers for in the future to just make PE for boys especially just reduce this uh, disengagement. Uh, firstly, from looking at the results, it basically came across that they want a wider choice of activities that they can do in PE, especially these kind of more informal activities were suggested. So things like dodgeball, I found that bench ball again was another one that really worked with the boys. Again, it was less, it still had the competitive element, but because the kids maybe weren't taken as seriously or didn't want to become a professional dodgeball player or etc like that, uh, whereas in the football a lot of them strive and feel they can be the next Ronaldo, so they take it that little bit more seriously, but these informal team games just were that little bit more inviting for these kind of disengaged boys. Um, again, the competitive classic games that we've played for years in PE, prime example football, they just wanted them to be avoided either completely or very rarely would they like to actually do it in PE. Um, another thing that came out was the option of a non-playing role, uh, which is quite common, but usually more common with the, the kids maybe that haven't brought their kit. You often get them to referee or video uh, game or take the score. So a lot of them uh, would rather, they still said that they didn't, it wasn't necessarily they didn't want to take part in PE, they still wanted to be feel part of the lesson, but they said that they would be happy to referee a game if they started, if they got to know the rules a bit better, or score keep. So these are other options that obviously as a PE teacher, it's actually very easy to do, um, is give them these other smaller roles in the class, but they still feel involved. Um, again, the S4, going back to this kind of exam pressures, the S4s, often they just felt that core PE from S4 upwards should be maybe revised a bit uh, in that they felt that just do they actually need it? They would rather kind of be doing this, uh, getting on with their exams and revision. And again, obviously this conflicts with the whole fact that we're trying to get all kids two hours uh, of activity per week. Um, so obviously that's going to clash in that and that's where you kind of, as a school, it's tough to decide whether or not you think about how they're feeling, what, what feelings they're getting through this PE experience um, or, and you want of course the health and well-being of them getting the two hours. So it's a tough one but again, you could, it could be done. We could look into how S4s maybe or other ways around it. Um, another thing was, it's not actually mentioned here, was sets. A lot of them in maths and English, I know uh, subjects, they put you in ability settings, um, which in these subjects, it seems to work. Um, not many kids find it too much of a problem. And I know when it's been mentioned for PE, it kind of causes some debate. So, but some of the most, well, my, the kids from this said they would rather have setting of ability level in PE. So it meant that the guys they were playing with were of similar, similar ability, therefore they wouldn't feel as kind of behind technically. Um, and the games again would be more suited for them. That's where you could, for the lower sets, you could really focus on dodgeball. You could make that such a kind of thing, part of it, you could dodgeball, badminton, these sports, whereas the top ones, who these boys who are really interested in football, that's when you can maybe focus on them. So again, it's, a, it's another idea. Um, finally, just looking at kind of how I've introduced my whole practice and dissertation kind of into my own teaching. Um, I've got a few classes now where I've got a, got a big S1 boys class of 30, I think it's 34 boys S1. So it's quite hectic, but obviously you get different ability levels and just different characters in the class um, and obviously some are football players, some are rugby players, some not sporty at all. So I actually had one kid who in the changing room before was in tears, we were doing a rugby block and he was in tears and at first I didn't have any clue what it was about and then from simply taking him aside it was 
the general fear of rugby. The fact that he was going to have to tackle some boys in his class who were physically much bigger than him. Um, so this made him feel that bad that he was in tears before class. And obviously as a PE teacher, you don't want to see a kid feeling that sad before one of your lessons. You would hope that you would manage to kind of sway him by saying, oh, you'll be all right. But it didn't really matter what I said. Um, he just did not want to take part. So I had the decision to make, either make him get in your kit, you're doing it kind of thing, a bit of an old school kind of get involved or work out some way of doing it or else he could be put off PE completely. So in that, and that's where I use these uh, alternative kind of roles. So I said today, don't worry, you get your kit on, but you're going to help me by filming the match. So I kind of made a deal out of it that he was on the kind of match analysis. He would film, he was kind of the Sky Sports cameraman for our lesson today. And another one every week I said, for the whole block, you'll just vary what role you do. So one time he was a touch judge, he had to keep up with play, so he's still physically doing something, but he just wasn't getting this bad experience through rugby. Um, so I felt that kind of worked and no one else in the class really, I thought, there might be a bit of conflict with other boys, but no one else complained. They seemed to accept it from just seeing how the boy felt in the first place. Um, but yeah, so that was just an example from my actual own teaching and how I've put it into the lesson. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.